Europe historically focused on low risk, low return, now starting to be a little more adventurous and, and, and come to the states and other regions of the world. Uh, expect to see continued flows into real estate from Europe. Japan, as we jump over to Asia, is kind of an interesting place. Haven't seen a lot of activity out of Japan over the last five years. Expect to see that $4 trillion in assets start to wake up and flow to uh, the U.S. and other markets, which is, will be the first time that that's happened in 30 years. And other, other Asian markets, I would say we're seeing activity, activity out of Malaysia, activity out of Thailand, uh, activity out of Hong Kong, less flow out of China. Uh, but I do expect in, in the Asia Pacific region to see a lot more activity out of Australia. Unilateral trade policies, populism, um, you know, protectionism are factors that I think will increasingly uh, impact the extent to which we see global capital flows in and out of different countries' uh, equity markets. But at the same time, We've seen unprecedented progress made in globalization of industry over the last decade. And uh, I, I continue to think that it's the highest growth sectors, notably technology and healthcare, that will continue to drive the disproportionate share of investment activity across global equity markets. In terms of what we're seeing in the marketplace, we have clients who are very bullish on the market. Clients in niche investment strategies or with niche investment strategies are pursuing aggressively opportunities. There is a spread between the bid and ask right now, generally in the case of the market, particularly in the U.S. We see a lot of money going into manufactured housing. We see money in the student housing space and with good, Goodwin's breadth across the life science space as well, we're finding our, our clients taking us into the wellness campus opportunity range as well. So to state the obvious, each investor is different. Some investors may be more comfortable investing in CBD um, downtown New York in a very, very stable building. That building usually will sell for a very high price and the yield on that return, um, the return on that investment is likely to be much lower than if that investor went into a more tertiary market like suburban um, Cleveland or uh, some more far-flung market that is not necessarily as viable as the downtown area of a money center within the states. As an alternative to investing into a tertiary market in the states to potentially generate higher yield, more return, an investor might go into a more far-flung market, let's say Spain or Greece or Italy, or into countries that uh, have economies that are in the process of recovering. Markets are getting pricey uh, and some markets are too expensive. Uh, but what we're doing is we're focusing on income and income growth. Uh, so markets like uh, Australia, Sydney, Melbourne still offer good opportunities. Although the market is expensive, what we're looking for is rental growth. So Melbourne last year had like 10% rental growth and that's what we're capturing with our investments. It's also, so it's a constant looking at where we are in the cycle and what opportunities are there uh, still left. Today, uh, it's very hard to get significant yield or significant returns from most investments, unless of course you're investing into cryptocurrencies. Um, in the real estate world, the trend is clearly more toward core, core plus and value, uh, and less uh, to opportunistic investing. However, if an investor really feels that it needs to achieve a 20% return, it's going to be putting that money into um, opportunistic investing and thus taking on more risk to try and generate those kind of returns. Global asset flows all depend on interest rates, uh, other opportunities, and um, other types of risks like geopoliticals. And it really depends. Every market is different. Every asset class is different. I know it sounds trite, but it's reality. And so you just got to be on it. One of the great things about us, we're multi-strategy, we're global. It allows us to pivot and get opportunities um, 
you know, as the market suggested and we can move very quickly.